Well, are the Packers a top five team in the NFL right now? Uh, that's a tricky question, okay? That's a tricky question, mm -hmm. Jane, just simply because I think if – if the, if the Packers weren't in the NFC, I don't know if I would regard them as one of those teams, right? Because when I look at top teams in any conference, okay, will you be one of the top, you know, three or four teams left at the end? And I think when you look at the NFC, Green Bay can be that. So when you, so so I'm gonna say yes just to answer the question, but you can't lose a player like a Devonte Adams and not think that it's gonna affect your offense and not think it's gonna affect your team at some point. I've said I've been on record by saying the reason why that Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers lost this la lost in this last playoffs is because Aaron Rodgers was looking so much for Devontae Adams. I think he had like 17, 18 targets, something like that, and rightfully so. Let me show you guys just how much. Devontae Adams meant to this offense. Look at the receptions. Over 50% of the receptions went to Devontae Adams. Look at the yardage. Over 1,500 yards. 50% of the yards went to Devontae Adams with 11 touchdowns. Almost over 40% over of the passing touchdowns, okay, went to Devontae Adams. You can't lose a guy like this, a guy that you can put in a slot, a guy you can put on the outside, a guy that... It doesn't matter if the defense has a shutdown corner or not. It doesn't really matter the coverage, right? How many times have we seen Aaron Rodgers just dropping the ball in the bucket uh, to a Devontae Adams with double coverage and all of those types of things? So I, to answer the question, I'm going to say yes. Yes, they are one of the top okay. teams in the National Football League simply because I think their path to get to the Super Bowl is a little bit easier than the teams on the uh, AFC side. But uh, the story about the Green Bay Packers will not be told until they get to the playoffs, until we see Aaron Rodgers yeah. and, these, and this group get past the NFC Championship. But, uh, for him to be such a great arm and only have one Super Bowl win, to me, that's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and only one Super Bowl appearance. I mean, that's the great caveat here. It's that, you know, we could talk top five team in May and there are no trophies given out. The truth of the matter is I look at that team and I look at that head coach who has a career regular season winning percentage of 796, the greatest ever for any coach yeah. through the amount of games he's coached. Uh, and I look at that player and the fact they've went 13-3 and three in the regular season the past three years, and I'm like, yeah, in May, I'll put them in the top five. What's that matter, though? Ed? What's that matter? Because to Michael's point, uh, come January and December, LaFleur and Rodgers together, they're two and three. They are under 500 in playoff games, despite 13 and three, three straight years. Adams is a huge loss, but uh, to Mike's point, they'll be in the mix. They will, and they're top five, sure, sure. I'll give you top five. Um, January, they gotta go into LA. Are they beating Stafford in that Aaron Donald led defense? I don't know. God forbid they have to face the 49ers in the playoffs, either place, home or away. Are they beating the 49ers in the playoffs, Jair Alexander or not? I don't know. And then you look at Tampa and Tom Brady. Is, is Rodgers going up against Tom Brady in a playoff game and beating him? I don't know. So, yes, top five team, I'll give you that. I don't know if there's any parade being given up in Green Bay with me saying that. The fact of the matter is, though, I think they've got one of the best young coaches in NFL history, and they've gone 13-3 and in the last three regular seasons. That gets my respect. But to Michael's point, none of this matters until we talk January football with these guys. Peter, we're dancing around it. Let's wake the people up and make some TV. You're talking your top five, top five. Who's your top five right now? Give me a top five. Take a deep breath and give it. Okay, I'll get the Rams and the Bucks are in the mix. I'm not going to rank them, but the Rams and the Bucks are in the mix. I think the, uh, the, the yep. Bengals and the Bills and then the Packers and the Chiefs. You find uh -huh. your, there's your six. You find out how you want to order them, but I, I think they're in that top five. I think you're all over it. That is your six. And yet here I'm going to lay out mine just like Peter did. The Rams are in. The Bills are in. The Chiefs are in. I'm going to put the Bengals in based on their young talent and what they accomplished last year. And then I'm at a crossroads, folks. We're talking top fives in May. Do I give a spot to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the Packers? I'm giving it to the Buccaneers. The, my answer to the question is no. The Packers are not a top five team. Top five is rare air. This is a great NFL right now. we got a lot of good quarterbacks, a lot of good complete 
teams, who play defense, who play special teams, who kept their stars, who acquired new stars on offense. So no, I'm not. The last couple times the Packers have played the Buccaneers, no. I'm not thinking to sit here and make Tampa Bay wake up and say that I'm putting the Packers in the top five. I also am still not exactly sure what this manifestation of the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers is going to be. All right, so they got a lot of talent on defense. That sounds fine. They're going to run the ball. That sounds pretty good. Answer me this. They're in a shootout with the Rams. They're in a shootout with who knows, with, with Tampa in the playoffs. It's 38 to 35. When you go to the box score, per pull up the box score of the Green Bay Packers wide receiving. Who's putting up the big numbers? Who's having 130 and two touchdowns? I don't see that player out there. I don't think Alan Lazard is that player. Is Christian Watson just going to come out of North Dakota State and be like, yeah, I'm a pro bowler. I got this NFL thing. No, pro-. I don't think so. I don't know if they are equipped to, to put up those kinds of points. I, I Listen, I think Rodgers is the best quarterback ever. I don't think they're a top five team, though. There, there's too many good teams top to bottom. I think Devontae was too much. I don't think they've done enough to replace him offensively. They're going to win a lot of games because they got great running backs and they got Rodgers and the Basacha special teams are going to be great. I just wonder in those yeah, marquee games when like, you know what, we need 38 in this game. Who, who's getting it? Who is putting up that kind of production? I don't know that question, so I don't know in top five for Packers. I love that you bring up that point, Kyle, because all you need is Aaron Rodgers. And I'm not taking anything away from Devontae Adams, but we always bring this up when we talk about Aaron Rodgers. They've been to at least the divisional round nine of the last 12 seasons. And let's take a look at some of those wide receivers, shall we? From 2015, after Jordy Nelson tore his ACL in the preseason, we've got James Jones, who had 890 receiving yards, Randall Cobb, 829, Richard Rodgers, 510. And I would argue that he's got a better run game than he did last year. He's got a defense that's ranked in the top 10 in the last two seasons, and they just added two first-round picks. So, yes, I think this is a top-five team, and I think it's a top-five team for the reason that Peter Schrager mentioned. You've got a coach that's given them three seasons of a 13-3 and three record, and then you've got Aaron Rodgers. As long as you've got that, I've got a lot of faith in this team that they'll be able to maintain that top-five status. Mm. Oh, you better than me, Jane. You better than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Rodgers. So you just don't see that, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. No. You know, for him to beat a man, uh, he got the got- same Super Bowls that I got. Come on now. 